This is the untold story of the Santiago Boys, a story that will get you to rethink everything you know about technology and politics, a story that will leave you asking, what if? So we had this room, no paper, all automatic, all screens. Decades before big tech stole our future, these rebellious engineers dreamt of a different digital universe. And it looked like what you see in the, in, the, in the films. It was attractive. Imagine a world where technology serves the people, not corporations. Where big data helps democracy, not ruins it. A place where the impossible almost becomes possible. In Latin America, you could dream of a utopia. Utopia. My sensation when I was sitting there and saying, OK, this is a, like a, a game. The ideas were bold, their goals noble. But as their dream is about to become reality, powerful forces crush it. They killed him. He was one of the casualties of our project. They, they were killing people every day. I saw people floating in the river in Mapocho, in the middle of the city, killed. A couple of times in my prison that I believe that I want to be killed. Why is the story not better known? And what really happened to the Santiago boys? Have they really resurfaced in Silicon Valley? And then I went to Cerro Park in 76. For me, it was hallucination. I didn't have the categories from the whole thing. Spies, terrorist attacks, startups, and much human drama. It's all here. The Santiago boys have lessons to teach us. And on the 50th anniversary of the Chilean coup, their story is more relevant than ever. The Santiago Boys, a nine-part podcast about the tech world that may have been. Written and presented by me, Evgeny Marozov. <laughs>